I have made a menu plan. This is my first time doing it, so if you're looking at this video to try to learn how to menu plan, then I'm probably not the best to watch because it's the first time I've ever attempted to menu plan. Kind of. I just wrote things down randomly, honestly. I tried to switch up so we wouldn't have chicken two days in a row or whichever. I'm using all brand new recipes. The rest of this video will be me trying the meal and then reviewing the meal after. I am doubt I'm going to type out this recipe for everyone. So I'll just probably do a screenshot in the beginning of the a video that I do so that you can screenshot it and print it yourself <laughs> or type it out yourself. That'd be a lot of extra time that I don't have a lot of because I spend a lot of it on YouTube answering comments. I like this little mini planner. I wouldn't say you'd need to purchase one of these. You could do this on a sheet of paper yourself. But as I wrote down each recipe, I would go through the ingredients and write down the one the ingredients that I didn't have and ingredients I wasn't sure if I had. I'm I think I have smoked paprika, but because I don't want to get up from the couch right now and go in the kitchen and check, I wrote down anything questionable and anything I knew I didn't have. So my next step is to go into the kitchen and cross off what I do have. I'm going to look and then I'm going to go to the grocery store and get things that I need. I picked a lot of these recipes because they share similar ingredients. A couple of them both use thyme and rosemary, a couple of them both use celery, a couple of them both use dill, etc. And a couple of them both use sweet peppers. I wanted to try to pick recipes that shared the same herbs, especially if they were fresh herbs, so that I could use as much of it as possible without any going to waste or having to freeze any. I even wrote the page that they were on because um, if they are recipes that I like, I will write them on a recipe card and put them in my do it again box, but I have so many recipe books, my mission is to try as many recipes as possible and not repeat making them. So. I've written down the page to find them on so that when I refer to this on Monday, I know that it's on page 124 of this book. But I'll just show you here. I have the new potato avocado egg salad on page 152, and I'm going to have that with my modern day brisket. This is the potato salad. Doesn't that look yummy? It has sweet pepper, red potatoes, avocado dill and egg. It just looks delicious. So I'm going to try this one. The other one I'm going to try, I'm going to try this pork chop recipe. I'm going to be making both the lemon baked fish with dill panko. I'll be making up the sides as I go. Probably rice or potatoes or something and some kind of vegetable on the side. I just use the bird's eye steamable vegetables because it's just really easy. So my focus mainly is just on the main dish here. And this is the grilled sirloin and pepper pasta salad. These are sweet peppers. We're not too big into spicy, so you might not see very many spicy things in my let me try that. I'm going to make the Todd's modern day brisket. And this has the rosemary and thyme. Also, one of my chicken ones has rosemary and thyme. I'm gonna try the chicken meatballs with sun-dried tomatoes. I feel like that looks super delicious. Probably just put some Alfredo noodles to boil and pour that on top. This recipe has three different versions. I'm making the cilantro lime version. I'm not gonna do the sweet potatoes because my husband doesn't like sweet potatoes. I'm just gonna do some kind of side on the side. Probably just rice. So the cilantro lime is this little guy that I'll be making. Three herb chicken mushroom is on page 71. That looks really tasty. This is the cookbook I'm meal planning from. This little recipe deal is perforated so you can just take it with you. To the grocery store. And there's your meal plan. I am trying the cilantro lime chicken minus the sweet potatoes. I'm just going to have rice and beans. I'm going to start with the rub. 
it says that we need a quarter cup of chopped cilantro, a teaspoon of zest, a half a teaspoon salt, and it says a quarter teaspoon cayenne pepper, but we don't like things spicy, so I literally put the smallest pinch in there to see if I even notice. And then two cloves of minced garlic. I will put my rings on my elephant. I've read one time about roasting chicken, but I don't know whether you, I always forget whether I'm supposed to roast it skin side up or skin side down. So I'm going to Google that, but I will include what my Google findings uh, reveal. I just spent the last 10 minutes reading online so many different ways to roast chicken. Most of them that I've read flip the chicken, so a lot of them start with skin side down, do most of the cooking time in the oven, and then they flip it skin side up and put the broiler on to crisp the skin side. So they've even talked about piercing the skin of the chicken to render, help render the fat and tenderize the meat or I don't know. So I guess it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to put them skin side down and then flip them the last few minutes skin side up and put it under the broiler if the skin isn't looking too crispy and I'd like to crisp it up. I did a very light sprinkling of salt and now I'm going to put them skin side down in a 450 degree oven. Make sure you spray your pan because I didn't and all the skin stuck to the bottom. They didn't tell me to spray the pan and I deliberately thought about it. I was like, I really should spray the pan, but I didn't. Because I was like, well, maybe they think that there's enough fat on thighs to let it not stick. But so the only skin I salvaged was this little guy. This is my husband's plate. I have some avocado on the side and I made rice and beans. This is like a Dominican type sort of bean. His mom made for him. He, sh he showed me how to make it. I can make these. Uh, he likes to cut up banana and put it on there. And this is the cilantro lamb chicken. So we're going to go eat it and I'll let you know what he thinks. That's bananas. What do you think of the chicken? The chicken is stupid. Chicken. Mm, good as hell. <laughs> It'll change your life. <laughs> I've got all of these ingredients in the bowl. Got the fresh parsley, the chopped sun-dried tomatoes, the garlic, the ricotta, all of the dried seasonings in there. It says in the directions to use a food processor to process the tomatoes, garlic, salt, pepper, but and the breadcrumbs. And I just felt it was easier to chop and mince up the sun-dried tomatoes and the garlic with a cutting board and a knife because I felt like that wasn't. <laughs> I, I felt like. <laughs> I felt like he's talking to his racing game. I felt like I didn't want to mess up my food processor for something so little. So I chopped or minced my own garlic and I pretty finely chopped my own sun dried tomatoes. Sun dried tomatoes. It's in an oil, so you just blot it dry. It tells you to line a pretty specifically, a pretty specific size baking pan, but I just use regular, regular cookie sheet because I don't know what they're talking about. I'm not going to measure nothing. It looks like 10 by 15 to me. And I lined it with um, parchment. It said it made about 40 meatballs. I had a little bit of a hard time. It's pretty soft. I don't know, like moist, you know? Meatloaf to me, or other meatballs I've made, feels like there's more bread in them. I followed the recipe. Here they are, fresh out of the oven. I made I made the white wine sauce. I did not have white balsam balsamic vinegar, but Google said I could use white wine vinegar. I also didn't find heavy cream in the store. I only had half and half. Like, the whole store didn't have heavy cream. I don't know what's going on. So, the sauce might not be as rich, but it looks pretty nice to me. I'm going to be making the new potato, avocado, and egg salad. So I need a pound and a half of tiny red new potatoes, and I'm going to start boiling them. Meanwhile, I'm going to prep all of this other stuff and get back with you in a moment. I've got the ingredients chopped up. I haven't mixed it. I'm going to add the avocado when I get to my mom's, 
and I still got the eggs and the potatoes going. I took a picture of the fish before I added the panko and then I realized what I did. So then I added the panko to this. I have the lemon underneath the fish and I'm gonna cook it up. This is just me measuring the panko. Instead of following the directions to cook in the recipe book, I'm just gonna follow the directions to cook on the back of the package of cod, just because that seems reasonable enough to me. I've got some butter to melt so that I can brown my panko crumbs. This is going to be mixed in with the panko crumbs. It's dill, lemon, and olive oil. And this is the recipe for you to copy. I had it with some grilled asparagus. Here's the cod right out of the oven. This is me in this frame just browning the breadcrumbs. This is the rice I made with it. It's the best rice recipe I've ever made and it comes from a cookbook that I will share with you in just a few clips. So here's the frozen recipe so that you can screenshot that. I got my book from Amazon, so this is what it looks like in case you want to order it. This is not one of the new recipes. This is a recipe that I make all the time. The classic rice pilaf from one of my favorite cookbooks. I'll share with you the recipe. I think one of the keys to this recipe is to toast the rice in the pan like they tell you to. Cook until the edges of the grains begin to turn translucent. I think that that gives it a really nice flavor, so I never skip that step. I do uh, taste a difference. Soy sauce marinated pork chops. Most everything in this recipe is measured by tablespoon. It does want a quarter cup soy sauce, but a quarter cup soy sauce is four tablespoons. So in order to save on dishes, I'm just going to stick with my tablespoon measure. We are only pouring two tablespoons over the pork chops and they say to add crushed red pepper but like I've said before, we're not big on spicy so I'm not going to add it. And then we're going to reduce this to about a quarter cup. Preheat the oven to 325. I recommend getting one of these little guys because my oven is so old. It makes a world of difference being able to tell what the temperature actually is in there. And I also love these little guys. Um, disposable oven trays. And I honestly just pull this out and I clean it <laughs> because I'm too cheap. I got a pack of 10, but I'm still on the same one. Just makes oven cleaning a bit easier. I totally forgot to record because I was in a rush to feed my brother and my husband, but the review is at the end of the video. I pan seared that chicken, then put it in the 400 degree oven, took out the pan, removed the chicken, and now I'm cooking the mushrooms in that same skillet just to get the flavor bits from the bottom of the pan. And this is what it turned out like. We're gonna mix this up and rub it all over the brisket. What I don't understand is why it tells you to add the brisket, brown on both sides to a skillet, and then transfer the brisket to a Dutch oven. Why don't you just brown it, brown it in the Dutch oven, so that you don't lose any of the flavor? Maybe there's a reason? I don't know, but we're going to find out and I'll let you know. I'm using the Better Than Bouillon base. I like these. They keep in the fridge for a very long time. I want to say like a year. You just put a teaspoon to a cup of water. This is the red wine I got. I don't know anything about wine, but the lady in the aisle told me this was dry red wine. <laughs> That's what I needed. 
and it was on sale. So that's what I picked. And also on vinegar. Look, it says two celery ribs and one carrot, but I'm doing three and two because I'm a rebel. If a recipe calls for half an onion, I usually use it and then I chop the rest of the onion up and put it in a container and it is so handy because then I don't have to chop onion. So it's frozen onion. Now I don't have to chop a whole onion. I ask what kind of red wine I should get and people always tell me to get the kind they're going to drink and I don't drink wine. So what I do with the leftover is I save it in this little lock and locks. My mom got me their cup size and I freeze them. And the lock and locks seal so the liquid never leaks out into the freezer. I realized they probably wanted you to move it from a skillet to the pan to get rid of the oil, the grease. So I dumped the grease but I kept the flavorful brown bits. I set my steak literally right on top of my vegetables because I didn't want to waste another dish. So I'm going to pour all this back into the Dutch oven. I wanted to mention that that is a chuck roast. It is not a brisket. I can never find brisket in my grocery store that isn't pre-flavored with peppercorn or whatever. But the chuck roast turned out being just fine. In fact, this is one of the best recipes we tried this week. So if you can't find brisket, try a chuck roast like I did. I'm going to put it in the oven. It says to cover with heavy-duty aluminum foil, but I have an oven-safe lid, so... Yeah. It smells incredible. They wanted me to put another baking dish on top of the brisket while it was in the Dutch oven to weight it down at least two and a half pounds. So I think I've made two and a half pounds. <laughs> And I'm going to cover it with foil because I don't think the lid fits on it now. Maybe it does. Oh, it does. And I'm going to put it in the fridge till tomorrow. Now, I didn't reduce this last night. It says to reduce it and put it in the fridge, but I put it in the fridge as, what, as it was. And there was a nice huge shell of fat that it just lifts it off like a plate, which I always think is cool. And now I'm going to reduce it. This is the brisket. There's still some fat in the chuck, well it's chuck roast, it's not brisket because I can never find brisket. But I, it says to take it out of the pan and then cut it into cubes and then put it back in the pan. But if you're knowing me, I just cut while it was in here, being careful not to scrape the bottom of my dish. So I'm waiting for the sauce to reduce and then we're going to pour it over the top and eat it. It smells really, really good. It does not look very appetizing, but of course it's like really cold. Mm. That was stupid. Was it glad? That was stupid. I was surprised at how tender. When I was trying to spoon it onto your plate, it was almost falling apart. I was like, oh geez. Man, that was, you outdid yourself. Wow. I'm so excited to try all these because there's going to be some of those in there. Gotta black be. box that. Black oh, box that. I will black box that. Whoa. Black box that shit. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. I never believed that cooking was a talent, but you're talented in cooking. Man. Oh, thanks, babe. Is this is falling apart. Yo, that shit is crazy. That shit is crazy. Man. I'll pass out on my seat, it ain't my fault. <laughs> I'm going to review the recipes that we tried this week. We didn't do the grilled sirloin and pepper pasta salad. That is the only one I didn't get to. We ended up uh, eating at my mom's this last weekend. So I will start with, what did we start with? Cilantro lime chicken, he rated a 10 and I rated an 8.8. .8. It's really good, but I've never tried any other cilantro lime recipes before and I don't like cilantro but I think there was something about roasting the chicken with the cilantro on it that 
did something to the flavor of the cilantro. It's fresh cilantro I have more of a problem with. I didn't actually have such a huge problem with that roasted uh, cilantro, so that's why I rated it so high. I need to make a video about how I rate these meals because I, I'll put it in the description, like what my scale means to me, because my ratings are pretty specific. The next we had chicken meatballs. I will never make those again. They weren't terrible. My brother and my mom liked them all right, but I feel like there was too much thyme in them, especially the addition of the thyme in the white sauce. I feel like they would have been a lot better if they hadn't been so tiny. And then we had the soy sauce marinated pork chops. My husband rated at a 7.63, though he did comment about the sauce again a couple days later. So he that a 7.63 is pretty high for him. He, he liked them. I rated them 5. I don't like them, but then I don't like pork. And I keep trying pork chops in different ways, but there's something about the taste of pork that I just don't like. So I'm, I, I always keep trying it because I'm like, well, maybe there's going to be something someday that makes me like, mmm, but so far not yet. But he really liked the sauce. So he rated that a 7.63. Then I made chicken and three herb and mushrooms, which I rated a 6 and he rated a 6 also. We weren't too impressed with that. I'll never make it again. If the recipe is not at least a 9 or a 10, I won't make it again. I have collected, I have a black box for recipes that as I try recipes in all of my cookbooks, if something is a 10, I put it immediately into that black box. And those are recipes I've made over and over again. And those are a lot of the recipes I, that I've made in my LMTT series. We had lemon baked fish with dill panko. I rated it a six, he rated it a five. He wasn't so crazy about the loose panko crumbs on top of the fish. I wasn't so impressed with it. I mean, it was good, but because I made a recipe from that Cooking for Two cookbook, it was a, it was cod and it was over scalloped potatoes. I have a picture of it I'll insert right here. I made that from the Cooking for Two recipe, and I'll do an LMTT on that soon because um, that was a 10. That was a really good recipe. So whenever I, whenever I have cod other ways, I'm just not easily impressed. I don't really eat fish, but I, I'm trying to. I don't, I'm trying not to be so picky. And I feel like the more I force myself to eat it, the more I'll end up liking it. <laughs> then we had the new potato avocado egg salad. <sighs> I give it a 6.5 or a 7. It was good, but I've had better potato salads that have dill in it. I really like dill, and this had dill, so I thought that would appeal to me, but I'll never make it again. My husband thought it was too mayonnaise-y. Then we had the modern day brisket, which my husband rated a 13. He, I'll put an insert of him I, he was making over it so much it made my heart happy because it literally took hours to make that and you had to put it overnight you had to weight it down it was quite a process so I was like if this doesn't taste magical I'm gonna be super disappointed that it took this much effort but it was the most tender and I've made roast a lot of times and I follow their recipes and I'm like why isn't my roast tender I always end up with chewy roast and I hate it so I was a little skeptical but this recipe made the absolute most tender roast I've ever had in my life. It was delicious, it was magical. He wouldn't stop talking about it. Even hours after he talked about it, he talked about it some more and then he wanted more, like two hours afterwards, he wanted more roast and the roast is already gone. The entire thing is gone because it was that good. It was so tender, amazing. And then when you reduce that sauce to two and a half cups, it becomes this potent, dark, delicious, flavorful, sauce that you just delicately drizzle over the roast and it was so good it was really good so he rates that a 13 yeah actually he said put that in the black box because <laughs> he knows about my black box so that's going in the black box for sure and those are the reviews of all of the recipes if this is the first time watching this video i make a cooking series called lmtt which means let me try that 
because I cook a lot, so I've had a lot of subscribers ask me to start making cooking videos, but I was like, well, a lot of these recipes I've never tried before, so I don't want to act like I know what I'm doing and make a cooking show over something I've never even tried. So I decided to make a let me try that, as in, this is the first time I'm trying this recipe, let me go ahead and try that, and then let you know what I think of it. However, the LMTTs have evolved kind of into tried and true recipes that I've tried over and over again, and a lot of them are my 10 rated 10 recipes and I'll put that rating scale down below in the description but I have specific recipes under LMTT but I think I like these weekly reviews I might keep doing those these so let me know if you like them okay I'm gonna make a menu plan and try again for next week oh and I'm gonna pull from these two cookbooks Okay, see you next time.